And welcome back. This week, I want to introduce you to a very special book. It is the Catechism of the Catholic Church. In short, it is known as CCC. Very simple, isn't it? So, Bambinos, this book is so important to us as Catholics because this tells us the answers to all the different questions that we have. And this season, we are going to be exploring just that. And Bambinos, there was something very special that happened in 2011. Pope Benedict XVI wrote us our own Catechism of the Catholic Church. Our own as in for us youth, for us children. And it is known as UCAT. UCAT is basically a simplified version of the Catechism of the Catholic Church. And do you guys want to know what is written in the UCAT? I will tell you, UCAT is split into four different sections. The first section, we learn about what we believe. On the second part, we learn about how we celebrate the Christian mysteries. Third part, we learn about how we have life in Jesus Christ. And on the fourth part, we learn how we should pray. So Bambinos, this week we are going to be exploring the first section bambinos this week's theme is why are we here i'm sure we all have asked that question what is our purpose why did god create you bambinos the answer is very simple god loves us so much and he created us out of love so that we will love god and love all of our neighbors and for us to do good in this world according to the will of God. And Bambinos, if we do that, we'll be able to go to heaven someday. And that is our purpose. So that we are created in love, so that we are able to love others. Bambinos, let's go and learn our Bible words. Let's do this together, Bambinos. One, two, three. Here we go, Bambinos. Let's go and learn our Bible verse. Hello, Bambinos. I hope you all are enjoying the Bambino program from Divine Retreat Center, UK. This week, we reflect on the very first topic from UCAT. That's what we believe. God loves us so much. That's why he created as in his likeness and image so that we can love others we can only love others when we follow jesus then only we can be one with god the father today's bible verse also teaches just that gospel of john chapter 14 verse 6 jesus said to him i am the way and the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Dear Bambinos, let's learn this Bible verse. Let's buy hard it. God bless you all. Bambinos, what an amazing Bible verse. We must make sure to learn it by the end of the episode. Now, Bambinos, let's go and listen to a wonderful story. This story is so special because it's about a prophet who also didn't know what his purpose was. But 
God reminded him how precious he is. Let's go and listen to our story. You guys ready? Let's do this together, Bambinos. One, two, three. Here we go, Bambinos. Let's go and listen to our story. Bambinos, where are you guys? Oh, <laughs> I'm not in the right place. One second. Now I am. You see, when we're in the right place, we're able to do the right thing. And today we're going to be talking about a prophet called Jonah. Many centuries ago, there was this man who worshipped God. And when God one day appeared to him, God said, Jonah from Tarshish. I want you to go to Nineveh because my people have been sinning against me. But I want you to go to them and declare my message that I want them to repent. And I want them to turn back to me because I love my children and they're doing something that is not pleasing to me. So Jonah heard the word of God spoken to him and he didn't say anything. But instead of going to Nineveh, you know what he did? He went to the harbour paid a fisherman to get on his boat, going to a different location completely, and he started his journey. You see, a few hours into this journey, these fishermen all started experiencing a turn and a change in weather. It was not just as windy as this, it was windier. The storms were just thrashing onto the boat and the fishermen feared for their lives. Jonah was asleep on the boat and he had no idea what was happening. And the fishermen looked around and found this one man sleeping and they were like, how dare he? So they woke him up and he, they said, can you at least try praying to your God? Because we've tried praying to our gods because they all came from different areas and they all worship different gods. So they called on Jonah and said, pray to your God and ask him to stop this storm. Before Jonah could say anything, the fishermen bought all different kinds of straws because they were going to cast lots to see how they could make the boat lighter because they had thrown all their cargo off and now they needed the boat to be even lighter. So they thought if we cast some of the men off the boat, then it would make it a bit lighter. Or so they thought. Or at least they would understand how to overcome this problem. So the fishermen got these pieces of straws and they started to cast lots. You know what this means is that they got all different uh, kinds of straws and got at least most of them to the same length and they got one shorter than the rest and they all one by one started to pull one piece of straw out the person who cast the shortest straw would be the one you know who'd have to explain how to overcome this so it happened that jonah got the shortest straw so all the fishermen in this storm in this wind they turned to him and said what happened? Why are you actually on this boat? And Jonah started to explain to them why he was where he was. He understood, well, when he woke up, he understood that he was in the wrong place. Through all of this storm, through everything that was happening, there was one person that was watching from up above. You see, God could see everything that was going on. He could see these storms happening, but he knew that everyone on that boat was safe in his hands. But he allowed it to happen because it was at that moment when Jonah realized that he was in the wrong place, could God then work through him. Because what happened was when Jonah explained to the fishermen everything that happened, the fishermen feared God and they understood that God was in control. So they all started praying to God because they didn't want to throw Jonah off the boat. They didn't want to sacrifice God's prophet. You see, even though Jonah was in the wrong place at the wrong time, God used that to convert all the fishermen on that boat and still carry on God's purpose. Because what happened was, after these fishermen prayed and asked for God's mercy and repented, they threw Jonah off the boat and God saved Jonah by allowing Jonah to be swallowed up by a big, humongous fish. And during that time, Jonah prayed to God 
And Jonah wasn't just in there for like one or two hours or maybe a day or two days. He was in there for three days. And in that time, he prayed and repented to God and asked God for mercy because he also had disobeyed God in his own way. But since he was now purified and now he was ready to set out on his mission and he understood how much God was working through him, God then allowed the fish to spit Jonah up onto the city of Nineveh. And as Jonah was washed up onto the shores, he realized where he was. But this time he was all fired up with the Holy Spirit and he knew that as he went into the city, God was with him. And when he went into the city, he preached to the people and he said, well, he said very few words because he was still, you know, he was still a bit hesitant about going into that land anyway. And he said to the people, if you don't repent, God is going to burn the city down. And with those few words, I think it was seven words that he said. And in those few words, even the king repented. The king declared over the whole city that everyone must wear ash and sackcloth and fast and pray to God for mercy. And God heard their cries. God heard their prayers. God saw the sacrifice that they did. And God was so compassionate towards his people that he saved them and he didn't hurt them in any way. And even though at first Jonah didn't go to the right place at the right time, he understood that in God's own timing, God accomplishes everything that he has in mind to do. And so let us allow God to work through us. And even though you may not know what you're doing right now, know that in God's timing, you are where you're meant to be, Bambinos. You are exactly where you're meant to be. And the purpose of your life will be revealed to you as long as you pray to God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. He loves you and He cares for you. Until next time, bye Bambinos. Bambinos, what an amazing story, right? Now let's go and do some art and craft. This art and craft is going to remind you about our wonderful story that we learned. Let's do this together, Bambinos. One, two, three. Here we go, Bambinos. Let's go and do some art and craft. Hello Bambinos, welcome back to Art and Craft. Today, we heard about the story of Jonah and the whale, right? When he was running away from God and the big whale came along and swallowed Jonah. Bambinos, would you like to know how to make this whale with Jonah in it? It's quite easy. Come closer and I will show you how to. So, Bambinos, to make our lovely veil with Jonah inside it, all you need is an A4 paper, a pair of scissors, an eye. So, even if you don't have this, we can always draw it in, okay? So, do not worry. So, if you have a blue paper, you can use that. But I don't have a blue paper, so I'm going to use a blue paint to paint over my white sheet, okay? You, would, you will also need a PVA glue and some water and a pen, okay? So shall we begin? Paint your white paper into blue. Now you can use it, okay? Draw the outline of the veil. So that's the outline. Now I'm going to cut it off. the mom. 
mouth open. There you are. And now, the next step is to stick our eye in, okay? There you are. Ooh. Make the teeth, okay? So it's so easy. So again, you take some paper, you Step is to draw Jonah. Okay, let's draw a little Jonah because he was a tiny person. Of course, he looks a bit scared being inside the whale. So you draw a scared face. Okay. I have Jonah here. Now I'm going to cut him out. There you go, here you go, this is our little donor and then I'm going to stick him there. Hmm, oh no. Here you go, I'm going to stick our little tool. There you go, now I have stuck our Jonah in and here you go, here he is. <laughs> Bambinos, now you know how to make our big bad whale. Bambinos, the most important thing is to remember the story of Jonah because there are important lessons to be learned from his story. Sometimes, as you know, we make a lot of plans for ourselves and it doesn't come through in our life and we worry. But do not worry because the plans of God for us are much higher and better in bible it says heaven has better plans god's ways are much higher than ours and his thoughts for us are much better than us papyrus don't forget to send in all your work and we look forward to seeing them bye for now Bambi we learned so much so far correct and we are just halfway through now let's see which 
saint we're going to go and learn about now. Let's do this together, Bambinos. One, two, three. Here we go, Bambinos. Let's go and learn about our saint. God said, you don't have to worry about love. As long as I am existing, you will be loved. Lord Jesus helps us to love the way that you are. Pampinos, today I'm going to tell you about the life history of an amazing saint, Saint Francis of Saints, who is known as the patron saint of deafs and writers. Francis de Sales was born on August 21, 1567, to a noble family in the kingdom of Savoy near Switzerland. He was both intelligent and gentle as a boy. He had a quick desire to serve God from a very young age. His father was a senator from the province of Savoy and he wanted Francis to become a lawyer and a politician when he grew up. He always asked Francis that why he spends more time in prayers. Although Francis wanted to become a priest, he kept his wish from his parents. His mother often taught him catechism, narrating beautiful stories with examples. And he often shares this with his friends. His father feared that Francis might get pampered and spoiled by his mother's love. And as a result, he hired a very rigid, demanding priest named Father D to tutor him. Father Deed uh, was a perfectionist in everything and he helped Francis in his formation. He also made him go through a very difficult time, but our young Francis never complained. At the age of 14, Francis went to study at the University of Paris, where he was excelled in theology and philosophy. It was during this time his mind got more and more fixed with the desire to serve God and he took a vow of perpetual chastity under the protection of Blessed Virgin. He was not free from trials, either the love of God had always meant more than anything else to him. But at, la at last few days, Francis felt that he had lost God's favor. This obsession haunted him day and night. And he often prays that if God's infinite justice wants him to go to hell forever, he prayed that grant him the grace to allow him in the hell. One day after this prayer, he went to sleep and like a miracle, all the disturbances causing to him vanished and he never had such a feeling thereafter. In order to please his father's desire, Francis took lessons on fencing, riding as well. One day when he was taking the lessons on riding, he had fallen thrice from the horse and he noticed that at each time he fell, his sword came out of the scabbard and it rest on the ground in the shape of a Christian cross. He, he found that God has made his way clear and he was saying something to Francis. Francis successfully completed his studies and at this time his father forced him to get married and he also found a girl for Francis but Francis rejected it and said that he wanted to become a priest. At first his father didn't agree but after much discussions and agreement Francis was ordained to the priesthood by the bishop in 1593. It was during this time Christians of Chablis were attacked by the enemies. Uh, many priests were scared to go to this place and do missionary work. But Francis heard about this mission and understood the seriousness of the mission. And he asked permission from the bishop to go to this place and to do missionary work. Bishop agreed and he, but his father did not agree with them. But Francis accepted the mission and on September 14, on the feast day of the Holy Cross, he started his journey along with his cousin. 
the governor of that place offered francis to stay with them also making him safe by providing his soldiers for his protection outside the castle the next day he walked to all the christian houses who were scared of the enemies by calling them to come to the local church and listen his preaching but they were really scared of them and at last only one family came to listen francis at the church literally speaking the mission was very dangerous and it caused many difficulties for him on his journey they uh, francis met some farmers they they often visited him and they liked the way he preaches and at last these farmers also converted to christianity francis also faced difficulties like uh, he had he had faced attacks from robbers he sometimes he was beaten sometimes he was torn but nothing stopped him he continued to preach everywhere and as the time went everybody slowly understood the power of his mission power of his teachings on the other hand his father kept sending him letters to abandon this mission but francis responded him by saying that until the bishop orders him to stop this mission he will continue this mission he also started writing series of pamphlets about the words of jesus and he started placing it in front of the doors of the houses and he was also patient enough and he had a good relationship with the kids by his missionary works he was able to gather more and more people close to god he successfully restored the christian faith among those people who were scared of enemies and francis was often called as the apostle of shabless by returning to the bishop's house after the completion of his mission he bishop offered him to be his successor at first he refused it but at last he accepted it and in 1602 francis was consecrated as the bishop of geneva and this mission or this ordination helps him to take extraordinary holiness and mystical union with god jane a dedicated christian woman listened the preaching of francis and she wanted him to be her spiritual director jane was actually on the path to a mystical union with god and after working with jane in 1610 he founded a new order called order of visitation francis was overworked and continued preaching without taking even a small break and this made him seriously ill he also used to catechize deaf people as well he insisted that every children was called to holiness and sanctify and every christian were called his life called to jesus love in 1622 he was invited by the duke of savonia and during this time he realized that it was coming to my death time he already knows that he was approaching his last days the last words of francis was the name of jesus and on december 28 1622 he died at his 56 years of age and you know pompinos once the venice tomb was opened after many years francis body was still found intact it was after 10 years of his burial and it was found that a pleasant fragrance was spreading all over the place his feast day was celebrated on 24th january pompinos like francis we all should unite in jesus by the love he has given to us even if you are facing worse conditions or bad condition never lose our faith in him and he will never leave us pompinos next week we'll meet with another saint bambinas 
Now we have learned about St. Francis de Sales. Let's go and stretch out our arms and legs and let's get moving. Bambinos, do this with me. One, two, three. Here we go, Bambinos. Let's get dancing. Praise the Lord, Bambinos. Bambinos, why are we here? You tell me, why are we here? Are we here to eat KFC or McDonald's or Subway? No, not Subway. Are we here to eat the ice creams, to watch movies, to enjoy our life, to play football, to play cricket, to play rugby, to watch movies to listen to songs is that why we are here is that why we are here on this planet no bambi knows that is not why we are here the reason we are here is because we are here to love one another we are here to share we are here to bless one another we are here to care for one another but above all i'll tell you again we are here to love one another. One of the biggest and main commandments of Jesus, this is one of the main commandments of Jesus, is to love one another. Especially love your enemies. The people who have hurt you, the people who have broken you, the people who have beaten you in school, all the people who hate you in your neighborhood, all the people who make fun of you, love them. That is why we are here. And when we love others, we fulfill the purpose of God and the purpose that He put us here for. And Bambinos, make sure to love everyone, no matter who they are, no matter what color, caste, religion, race they are. Love everybody. Because that is why we are here, to love one and other. Bambinos, today we are going to have a beautiful time dancing and singing because it's a beautiful song called la 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 i hope you're ready to move <laughs> i hope you're ready to groove because we're gonna tell the world that we're here to love here we go bambinos We 
should go and love God and those around us Cause the Lord first love us all We are called to love, la 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 Of more We should go and love God and those around us Cause the Lord first love us all Bambinos, now that we have listened to our story, learned about our saint, done some art and craft, dance around, let's go and receive our final blessing. Bless I pray for all these children. Give them grace to grow and to love you more and more each day. Give them grace to love the Catholic Church. Your Almighty Father, Make all these children the ambassadors of Christ. We ask this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bambinos, that is the end of our episode. And you know what that means. It's time for our quiz round. As usual, I'm going to give you guys five questions. So, and I'm going to give you guys 10 seconds to answer each question. So good luck, Bambinos. Question number one, are you guys ready? The first question is, what was our Bible verse for the week? I'm gonna give you guys three options. Was it John 14, 6, John 2, 8, or Matthew 12, 18? 10 seconds on the clock. Bambinos, the correct answer is option number one. John chapter 14, verse 6. So well done you if you got that right. Bambinos, are you ready for question number two? Question number two is, God commanded Jonah to speak to people of which nation? The options are Babylon. Option number two. Or, option number three, Nineveh. 10 seconds on the clock. Bambinos, the correct answer is option number C, Nineveh. Well done if you got that right. Question number three, how many days did Jonah spend in the belly of the whale? Your options are three nights, option B, three days and three nights, or option number C, three days. Bambinos, I'm gonna give you guys 10 seconds. Bambinos, the correct answer is option B, three days and three nights. So well done you if you got that right. Qu question number four. The question is, where was St. Francis de Sales born? I'm going to give you guys three options. The options are France, Italy or Switzerland. 10 seconds on the clock. Bambinos, the correct answer is Switzerland, of course. So well done you if you got that correct. Now, the fifth and the final question. The question is, which Pope put together the UCAT? There are three options. Option number one, Pope Francis. Option two, Pope Benedict the 16th. Option number three, lastly, Pope John Paul II. Bambinos, 
10 seconds on the clock. Bambinas, the correct answer is, that's right, Pope Benedict XVI. So well done you if you got that right. Bambinos, that is the end of our episode. But before we get going, I must set you guys this week's challenge. This week's challenge is to make your own Jonah and the Whale. And please send in all your works to Divine Kids at divineuk.org. Bambinos, for this season we have launched a new segment. It's called My Bambino. And this section is for you. We want you to send in all your experience, testimonies, a small video of you to our email address. We love to hear your feedback. So please send in all your testimonies. And all your works to divinekids at divineuk.org. So, Bambinos, till next time, bye-bye and God bless. Have a blessed week ahead. Bye.
Thank you.